Talk Radio. Seven twenty seventeen. Get my volume set here. <clears throat> Scott Hintzer, Tinfoil Hat Club. Monday or Cyber Monday, in fact. What a time to think about. We're over with Thanksgiving. The end of November is just around the corner. And heading into December, meaning Christmas, and those embracing Santa Claus or Satan Claus. And as the weeks go here, I want to talk a little bit about that. But tonight, what I want to do again is make the foundation or set the the stage on what I believe, what I believe is out there in, in ways of deception, the false alternative media, the the groups of people that I said that I would start to expose, and so. As I set this up with the understanding and ability, now I have covered some of it in the past, but I, I want to drive it home. I want you to understand that there's a great war for your soul. They want you. They want you dead. I can remember <clears throat> sitting in my attorney's office, and he hung up the phone, and he looked right at me, and he said, a certain somebody wants you dead. And that was a very sobering moment because uh, at the point of realizing that someone hates you that much, that they want to see the last breath be drawn on you, that at that point in time you look at things a little differently. Now, Trump is making changes within his own administration and making changes to the Social Security, potentially bringing in Now, the mark of the beast has been greatly distorted. I'm not going to get into that tonight, and maybe I do need to address it more. But we need to understand that there's a point when your soul is taken, when your your, your name is removed from the Lamb's Book of Life. Okay, and at that point in time, that the plagues and those things that come in the Book of Revelation come upon you. Well, how terrible that is. And so, again, it shows that there are those who hate you so much that they want to sell you a bill of goods that causes you to sell your soul. Now, Hollywood is full of those people. I don't need to get into that tonight. Congress, the House, the Senate, the presidency, the government as far as state and county, literally full of those people who do not have your best interest in mind. And so, as again, as I set that foundation of the understanding of the deception, again, tonight's show in in its name, Memory Error Code 666, you know, when I worked for Motorola, and I I hadn't thought about this for a while, when I first entered into this incredible um, environment of technology in the early 80s that was a little bit like walking into the Starship Enterprise, that there was some older equipment in there that that uh, they needed because the industry had not caught up with the need of the technology, the ability to produce it. And in order to feed the software, the program, into the machine so it knew what to do, because basically a, uh, a, a processor in and itself doesn't know. It has to have program to establish its baseline, it's, it's what it does, what it's supposed to do. And, and what's interesting is this was supposed to be a cleaner environment, environment, but the software was actually on ticker tape. You ever seen 
It's about a half inch wide, you know, like the old reading the ticker tape of the New York Stock Exchange and how the little paper came out. Well, this was the same thing, and it had all these holes in it. And I had to put it in this little uh, compartment and flip it closed and lock it in and then program start. And it would start reading the zeros and ones that were punched in this tape. And it, geez, it seemed like it took forever. And if it didn't read one of them right, it only need to make a mistake on one hole, it came up with a parity error code or syntax error. And sometimes it was a pain, and it depended on how you held it, and it was just a, just a I can't believe they, they used it then. But the point of it is, is us as humans, the information that's fed to us is very much the same thing. It's how they hold it, how they feed it, how many holes are in it, are the holes aligned? So, you know, information in, garbage out. And so I, I want to, again, address the, how we think, how we conduct the information given to us, the, the people who feed it to us, all depend on that, and that you get parity and syntax error codes. But for us as humans, we get memory error codes. We think we heard something. We th- thought we knew what they meant back then, and we had established a false baseline of truth that led us to believe even more lies down the road, and that's very critical. So when we look at Trump and we look at the other information that's given to us, um, and I'm not going to get into much about Trump, but I, I do, as I've mentioned, he's not who he says he is. He was chosen. He was not elected. He's just another side of the pyramid. That the very people who are trying to tell us that they are somebody who has our best interests, as I've said before, it's the same thing. We're in this paradox. We're in this matrix of lies. And this lie that has been fed to us so long has caused our memory error code 666 to surface. And so we're willing to accept information. We're willing to move forward on such things that have no basis in our salvation, no basis in our relationship with God, no basis for why we're even here on this rock. Because, again, it is no mistake that you are alive today. There is a purpose. There is a plan. And from the moment of conception of yourself, there was a spirit put into you by God, the Father of spirits. And in this job that we have to do, there is accountability. And so the enemy, those things that that are here to deceive and lie to us, do not care what happens to us. They only care that we fail. And in this failure brings death. So, as we head into, you know, one more year of service, uh, President Trump is actually heading into the first year of service. And though there are things that give the appearance that he has done well, again, he is here to set the stage for our failure. So just like all others before him, and the same for anyone that may follow him, because you never know, he may be the last one. So the big question is, is he the last? Will he be assassinated? Will he be impeached? Will he step down? As we move forward, we will know. But what we will not know publicly is the ones who make the call. Now, the Illuminati, the New World Order, whatever you want to call them, they are a cult. They are ones that have a Luciferian doctrine They are most likely not completely human. There are reasons to believe uh, that they are of another type of entity that, again, is not sanctioned, is not qualifying to God's grace. And so we are the enemy. So, and I did a show before called Those We Do Not Speak Of. Why? For most part, we do not know who they really are. I mean, by name by person. So just to say that they exist or to understand, again, they are the New World Order, the the Illuminati, the Luciferians, non-human. So we will, in time, know what happens to Trump, just not totally why or whatever order, because they run by a number system, they run by time, they run by ceremonies, they, they run by the demons that run them. 
And make no mistake that, again, the evil ones are in the detail. So my point in this whole statement is everything is controlled. Everything is planned. Everything does happen for a reason. It's just not a reason that is something that benefits us. Now, as I mentioned before, God is in control. And those who would have wanted to have ended us a long time ago or sieged us uh, have been held at bay. But through man's sin and willful participation in sin and those occult practices, that we have systematically, a little bit at a time, given them this power and authority to have us. So that not a, you know, holiday or anything that we see today has all been altered and changed, like Christmas, and Easter, you know, having Halloween forced down our throats. I, I did Thanksgiving on last Friday. So the reality of things are the reality of what we see. Whether we comprehend it or not is a whole other problem. Reality is, deception is what could be or has been. So we coincide in both ways. There is reality, there is deception, there is truth, there is lies. It's also referred to as duality. This is why you see the matrix or the checkered floor in Freemasonry of black and white. You have evil, you have good. And in this coexistence, which they believe is a resonance in spirit or in some type of occult meaning, that knowledge is gained from it. Abilities, power to control, power to siege, power to have. And either way, this matrix that keeps us basically divided, that the authors of this matrix that gives us disinformation, this is their specialty, that in it we are brainwashed. Now, <clears throat> as I talk about some of the people, you know, like I mentioned, I've had some emails come back about those that I've mentioned before, that when you have disinformation specialists, what I want to bring up tonight is those that are doing such things, why are they not getting beat up? Why are they going through life happy, uh, you know, having no opposition from the New World Order. So when we look at the brainwashing that comes from the Hagman, we see being beguiled by quail. You are in a perception of truth that is not. Because when you give some truth, when you give some knowledge, you give facts, you give accountability, you give things that are only there to, to make it look as if it's truth, now, when you go to a psychic reader, when you go to these other things, you get a free demon with every reading. And the point of it is that when you involve yourself in such things, when you allow yourself to be deceived, that in this deception is counter to what God has offered us. It's in, it's in counter of what Christ did on the cross. And so in it then allows spirits, allows demons, allows deception, allows curses in. And I've painstakingly laid that out over many years, that in this order, as it comes to us in, in lies and not truth, and as we receive it, the knowledge that we receive, it becomes who we are. And so as a product of those things that have been perpetrated onto us, then we're part of the problem. And so in this deception and a perception of truth, that and likely to accept new age rhetoric. So what I the, the point of it is is that a lot of the people that I've been dealing with over the past couple of years since I've been getting into more of the TI gang stalking, that those who have come to me over the years, though they've been in torment, though they've been in, you know, uh, absolute terror, and believe me, it, that's the case, that they're, they're not really in Christ. And so a lot of the issues that they have were actually demonic. They were not necessarily of voice to skull or psychotronics or, or even the gang stalking, as you would note in the physical, that in reality it was a terrorizing from the spirit realm. Now, as I mentioned before, <clears throat> that I take every case very seriously because you are in torment, you are suffering. 
The question is, what's the source? And in this source, that's my job to define, to split the hair, to see what is what. And unfortunately, in the past two years, has been some of the most trying time in all my 18 plus years, going on 20 years now of deliverance, that I'm seeing a move change towards new age, towards um, the, the occult in ways that you would think you're not. And what you're doing is you're listening to those who are from the occult, who are disinformation specialists. And so by believing this, then this is an indoctrination to set you up for the next stage. And I'm very concerned about that. So I say this because ever since I started ministering to TIs specifically, I've noted the broad range of backgrounds and beliefs not necessarily true believers, as I mentioned before. And so what I have found is demons are still the root issue. And so evil does what evil is. But now there is another reason to blame your basic uh, problems and your troubles on, and that is electronics. That is government uh, conspiracies, government uh, gang stalking, organized gang stalking. And though these things do exist, these things are... Uh, unfortunately happening to a great deal of people that we must take a step back and see the big picture okay what a great um, uh, covering for demons to operate in so for the most part as I said before the true root issue is never addressed and so as I continue on as I see the matrix deception being you know played on you uh, basically, spill into Christianity or Christian churches, spilling into the truth, truther movement. And I'm very concerned about that. As I mentioned, there's a lot of people being awakened. A lot of them are stumbling in these churches that aren't going to get them anywhere. They're not going to get delivered. They're not going to get the truth. In fact, when they try and reveal the truth, even though they've just been awake, their, their spirits have been uplifted because now they know why, or they think they know why, and they want to share that information with everyone. Were you like that? That's the way I was. And, I, you know, I was hit between the eyes with a two-by-four by the very people who called themselves believers in Jesus Christ. And here I am all these years later, tarred and feathered, set on fire, you know, nailed to the wall, spit on. Uh, just basically run through the ringer, and I come to the conclusion that the false converts or the uh, deception into the church is part of the great deception. And that means that we have to be very vigilant and very careful about all the information that we give or receive. I've said many times in the past, Jesus plus nothing. I've been scolded for it, I've been questioned about it, I've you know been told everything else. But in fact, what we find here, that in the truther movement and the, the so-called Christian uh, belief, that in it, that they believe in many other things other than the Great Commission. In fact, they reject the Great Commission. Now, when we look at Matthew 28 and we look at 16 through 20, that again, as I've said before, that Jesus commands the apostles to continue those things that he has taught them, trained them uh, to do. And by doing so, that they are to spread the gospel, they are to continue the deliverance of those who are in bondage. So the deceived Christian church, in reality, is in their own bondage. And my statement of Jesus plus nothing means more than ever. And what I mean is that now with all more deception and more lies, that getting back to the basic truth is extremely important meaning defaulting back to Jesus brings truth to a lie, is the only key to truth, period. Doctrines are man's way to screw up God's word. We were warned of doctrines of demons and warned that those who practice such things, such as divination, sorcery, witchcraft, could be put to death. And in fact, in the Old Testament, they were because, one, they didn't have uh, the grace of Jesus, there were those that were so infected that they were infecting others. And when you practice such things, you also have sacrifice, you have bloodletting, you have the killing of children. 
and the blood that spills onto the ground curses the ground. And so without the, again, uh, bringing people out, that didn't happen, and so the liquidation of those was necessary. Yet all of us, these basic informations that we have received, have brought us into basically that curse of divination and sorcery and witchcraft because the knowledge and the beliefs that we're receiving today are based in that because it comes from deception it comes from just skewing the truth enough because that's part of witchcraft what witchcraft does when i close people thirds eye when those who have been masons and those who have been in the occult or have a curse upon them of deception when i close the third eye and I plead for the blood of Christ to cleanse their minds and to have their ear gates and eye gates basically reset and realigned with the truth of God, that it's as if they wake up and now they can see and they can think clearly, they even hear differently, and those things that have been lies before do not take hold, they do not take seed. And that's a deliverance. Do you understand that? And so since deliverance is not done, then divination, sorcery, and witchcraft, I assure you, are in most of the information that you're getting. So yet, all of these abominations are alive and well among us. And it's unfortunate. You listen to witches, you listen to sorcerers, you pay and subscribe from them as well. And in this information that you get, this allows their spirits to infect you, causing spiritual blindness, the inability to have discernment between truth and lies. And I'm sorry, it's that's a fact. And some of you know this. You went down the wrong road. You've been beat up. You're not getting uh, help. You, you go into some of these chat rooms and you find out that you're even more gang-stalked. You're even more beat up. And they keep you in bondage. We all have been deceived at one point or another in our, in our life, right? By those we trusted. We were betrayed by them, but yet we accept information by those we do not know today. You were deceived once by people you loved and cared for, and here are strangers that you're taking them at face value. With no history, with no proof, only smoke and mirrors, only charming and of knowledge to keep you in this deception to think. Now, when you're hurt, when, when you're tormented, when you're, when you're stalked, and your life is miserable and you're surviving by whatever means, you'll have a tendency to want to believe in things that are not true. So they have you over a barrel. So I'm not scolding you and I'm not telling you that you're crazy or stupid. This is how they operate. The, the demonic world is opportunist. They will set the stage to break and hurt somebody and use that hurt and wound to draw them in. And again, those who um, basically practice this, and we call them Jezebels, we, we call them psychopaths, we call them sociopaths, we call them narcissists, they feed and they play on you. So I can assure you that many of those who are in this third alternative news are narcissists. And because they are of one, of that nature, they're full of demons. And their demons are capable of manipulating and playing you right to the very end. And where am I going with all this? Well, right now, as I speak, your future is being manipulated. The, tr the, the lies are being set. They're put in type. They're put in magazines. They're put on YouTube. They're spoken to you over the radio. Friends that are supposable friends are put in your place all manipulated and controlled. Now, those who who have the the um, ability to to seek knowledge and truth, meaning that you have discernment, you've either had the curse broke off of you, or you've been in in a family that's been blessed because they have been operating in truth. That those are truthers. Those who have the ability of discernment to to expose evil. You're the ones targeted. You're the ones beat up. You're the ones sent down the, the, a path of destruction. And your heart is pure. You're working, you know, diligently to bring truth, but yet you're annihilated. And you're wondering what you're doing wrong. Well, you're not doing anything wrong. 
You're standing in truth, and this is why you're being attacked. So your future is being manipulated, being directed, being altered to keep you from being any opposition to the final plan. That starts with today's lies, period. I see before me the great deception, the altering of truth, the hiding of history, the formation of a new world order. That is with everyone falling for the same trick, and that is there there are alternative ways to the truth. Well, that's not true. There is only one way to the truth. And even alternative ways to God. Now, the Catholic Church is working very hard to supposedly unite even the Christians under one religion. And that religion has absolutely nothing to do with God, has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus Christ, but there are people who are going to fall for it. So deception is already here in many forms. Now, it Again, I've mentioned before that that some you know you think you can see deception coming, you think you you'll be able to tell the lie, and I, I kind of gave the the scenario kind of like a bunch of cowboys out uh, by the campfire and the it's at dusk and the sun's going down and off in the distance they see a rider bringing up a bunch of you know a cloud of uh, dust off of the hooves of the horse riding towards them and so off in the distance they can see this deception. That's not how it works. When, when you have ones that are capable of, through, through familiar spirits, looking into the very soul of you, they can read you like a book. And they can play you. They can manipulate you. And now we do have electronics. Now we do have psychotronics. We have voice to skull. We have carrier waves that go through our minds and they're able to basically map us and see this. But this is what the demons have been doing all along. They don't need electronics. They have familiar spirits. So in this communication of deception, it keeps you in a, in a form of thinking that you have truth, but it's not. And this is what gets you to destruction. So if you think you have truth because it makes you feel good, that's one of your first problems. When you have euphoria, when you have something that brings uh, excitement, that could be a lie. Because when you truly get truth, what you get is peace. What you get is the ability to sit still and know that God is God. That in it, no more uh, anxieties, no more anxiousness, no more pain or suffering, but you have peace. And in this peace, you have the ability to hear God. Because you're not jumping around, you're not trying to uh, ring the bell, you're standing in the ability to receive the love of God. Now, many women, unfortunately, because of the relationships with their fathers or the lack of, cannot even begin to comprehend God's love. You didn't have daddy put his arms around you, you, you he didn't love you, he wasn't there. And so you have no concept of the Father's love. And so this to you is something off in the distance. And it's very understandable. And so it jades you and it keeps you. And and many those who have uh, your sexuality morphed, which which is can be very complicated. But the point of it is that when you 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 take paths that try and make you feel good because you don't understand the true peace that comes from a father's love. And because of that, you'll accept about anything. And that's why these bad boys come along and, and really hurt good women. So if you think you have truth because it makes you feel good, again, as I said, most likely it's a lie. What you should, what you should be rejoicing in, as I mentioned the peace, that the fact that your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. That is what you should rejoice in because in reality, since we're so, um, the, the deviation, uh, the, the division, the fact that we're not really coming together as what God would want us to do, and this separation that since two and more are not gathered, then Jesus is not in the midst of it. And so what we have is we have a one-to-one relationship 
trying to survive, and because we haven't corporately come together, because we haven't petitioned God, then the evil has been able to prevail over the many centuries, and here we are today. So we are so far down the rabbit hole that most are not going to pull up from the plane that basically is heading straight in uh, to the ground in a nosedive. You know, some of the aerodynamics of planes, that if they get into a tailspin or they go downward too quickly, that their geometry or their matrix of the plane itself are are incapable of pulling up. And some of the airliners that are out there You know what they did on 9-11, supposedly, uh, with the ability to turn heavy aircraft and a dime and all this other stuff is an impossibility. These airplanes are designed to to go up, fly as straight as possible, and come straight down. They're not aerodynamics uh, acrobats. They're they just, just not going to happen. And so in our life, being wounded, being broken, our aerodynamics is not there. We don't have coping skills. We don't have the ability to pull up. And so when we get into a nosedive, we basically put a parachute on and bail out. But most small planes do not have it. And so many of us perish or we hit rock bottom to the point that we never pull up. So all you really can do is show yourself approved to God. Now when I say this, we repent, we renounce, we clean ourselves up. And we do what we can with given the circumstances that we have. Because we've been so wounded, we've been so divided. And so in this late hour, I'm just making an appeal to you to please look around you and understand that the information that's being given to you is basically causing you to leap out of a plane that has no parachute. So what do I mean again? Well, you are continually seeking God's kingdom. When you are doing that, this helps you reject all lies. Because then you line up with the word of God, or you go to your prayer closet, or you're able, or the Holy Spirit is able to speak to you, because you're not grabbing at straws, you're not going to New Age, you're not going to these liars. See, if you're in a bad relationship, and you cared about the person in the very beginning, and you fell in love with them, and now they've got you. Now they can abuse you. Now they can do things to you that they couldn't have done prior. And because of trying to break away from such relationship, that pain that causes, because you you now have lost your hope. You, you had great hopes and dreams of this you know relationship, and now it's crumbled. And that you still hold on to a little crumb of hope. And because of that, the demons still have you. And this is also referred to as a soul tie. And so in this community of chaos, we have soul ties to those people that we once believed in. Do you understand? So you had subscriptions to this person. You've been listening to this one for a couple of years. And you just can't walk away. Well, that's a bad relationship. And in it is bondage. And so by renouncing and breaking and severing that soul tie, that demonic soul tie that is not a godly soul tie, you'll find truth. You'll be able to get away from it. So again, by continually seeking God's kingdom in itself is a checks and balance to verify the truth. That with all that basically has happened and all that will happen only affects the body, not the soul when you're in truth, when you're in grace with God. Fear that that can kill the soul or the spirit, not that that can kill the body. Now, no one wants to die, not asking you to die, not asking you to put yourself in harm's way, but it's that fear. See, that, that, that concern of pain and suffering and death And because you have spirits of fear, or you have curse upon you, or you have these issues, this is what keeps you in bondage. So again, do not be concerned uh, of those that can kill the body, but those of the spirit. And what I mean, on the long run, that when you're able to see truth, fear will not be in you. Because fear is the exact opposite of faith. And when you have faith, you do not have fear. And so in this, we're able to move forward. Today, 
false converts outweigh the true believers a thousand to one, and I'm not joking. There are, the churches are loaded with people who have absolutely no idea what's going on out there. And if you think I am wrong, then why is everything so screwed up in the way that it is? Because if we really had that truly many believers, then there would be a coming together to corporately stand against it. So deceive people and deceive so-called believers is the only way that the enemy can pull it off. Because if we are in truth and we have the knowledge, we will not receive the lie and we will seek the truth, which then exposes the lie. And those who are giving the lie will be exposed. And so by pulling all of this off, then they're able to move forward. Now, we also have technologies that mimic basically humans, known as clones. Hollywood, I believe, is full of them. Uh, the government is full of them. We also have, you know, different uh, uh, creatures or those things of entities that uh, have the, we call them walk-ins. They can have the essence of others. They can take the spirit of others and mimic this is a world that we have that most have never known. We can't comprehend it because we don't have the knowledge in general to have, to have warn us about such a, such things. And so our reasoning is ap, is in a a bondage. So to comprehend, to see truth is so difficult because when when we're when we're in an environment where we have so many people believing in the lie then we have an abundance of lying spirits. And in this, this uh, uh, pressure that's put upon us, we have a hard time seeing that truth. So we have basically artificial intelligence woven into our very existence. Believe me, artificial intelligence is now controlling everything. Whether you got Facebook, Internet, cell phones, your search habits, Everything that you do has been, has been examined, has been categorized, has been documented, has been recorded, and then, and then an analyst, or to analyze your behavior, your thoughts, then is coming back out to sway you. You, you know, case in point, how many of you have made the mistake of going on to a used car lot? Thinking you weren't going to buy, thinking you, you had a, a type of car in mind, you had a price range, and an hour later, you, you walked out of there with not what you went in for, you, you paid double, it's a piece of garbage, and you think, how did that happen? Well, the, the influences, these people are masters. And so those that we have in the media, those in the alternative, those in this supposable truth movement, are masters at what they do. And with it, the technologies that mimic humans, that mimic uh, the ability to reason and think brought on by artificial intelligence, that they're able to basic dictate your thoughts and emotions to cause you to go with certain directions by electronics, electronic means. We have educational systems, unfortunately for the young, that are taking them in this direction. Systems to implement the compliance with liberal mindedness. Now, liberalism is off the charts. I was listening to a station today that it was, and it's not easy, but I try and listen to them so I can see what in the world they're talking about. And Pelosi still being hailed as some great achievement when that's one of the most demonic individuals I've ever seen in my life. You know, if she were to call me up and schedule for deliverance, I'd say, you know, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what I'd say. I, I guess I'd have to let her in just to see what would happen. You ever you ever hear that? You know, you, you, the reason you hang around is just to see what happens next. And adults as a whole have been broken again and again. Think of all the divorces. Think of all the bad relationships and all of the uh, things of, of betrayal that have taken place that, if anything, you're willing to accept anything that feels good, anything that looks like that it works. So whether you're a child, a teenager, or an adult, or maybe even a senior, we have been put in basically in the grinder. And so anything that does not bring pain sounds good to us. Now, 
unfortunately, because of that, <clears throat> then we seek a motion that brings some kind of uh, pacifier. And so as a society moves forward without truth, without the true God, without Jesus, we are doomed as a whole. Now, I'm not trying to be uh, you know, a fatalist. I'm a realist. I'm trying to give you the truth and how it's acting, and you know what's going on. You know something is stirring in your spirit. You can taste it. You can smell it. You can feel it. You may not be able to put your finger on it, but you know that something's gone wrong. And so the remnant, few, are the last hope. So if you are a truther, if you are one that has uh, seeked the kingdom of God, one who has renounced, who has uh, basically prayed to break curses and seek the divine guidance of God, you are the last hope that the commissioned to take back what the enemy has stolen. You've been commissioned. Do you understand that too much is given, much is expected? If you think uh, that there, you know, basically are not going to be casualties, then you're mistaken. There are many, there have been many, many, many casualties. There's been millions of people over the centuries, because one time and history and dates have been uh, taken from us, we, we really don't have the true concept of how man has been on this earth in reality. And that I believe that millions of people who were ones that were of truth and tried to bring uh, God have been taken. But again, I believe the Abraham's bosom. I believe that they uh, have been redeemed uh, and that they will spend eternity with the Most High God. So if you think that casualties are not going to be high or you have a concern about that, you should be concerned. But again, do not operate in fear. You need to understand that casualties will be heavy. This is where those whose faith is based in doctrines will crumble and fall. Men's hearts will fail them for fear. So we have seen torture. We are going to see torture. We've seen death. We are going to see death. We've seen destruction. We will see destruction. In reality, that anyone would crumble under such circumstances, but it is faith in the understanding of who we are in Jesus Christ that brings us through. So this is what separates us, the chaff from the wheat. You need to understand that, as I mentioned, to celebrate the fact that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The fracturing of adults was by design keeping them from deliverance, keeping them from relationships with God, and keeping them from a relationship with Jesus Christ. When those who are broken were able to be attracted to the truth of Jesus Christ, then in it comes a false church, false doctrines that lure and pull them away, maybe even an equitous pull because of the generational curses that had not been broken off in them. That in this, through alternative means of New Age, and those are the false doctrines or so-called Christian doctrines, even psychology, the truth is not part of the equation. And so, in with no truth, then we have lies. Those lies, again, bring destruction. Now, as I move forward, I plan, as mentioned, and diving deeper into what's really going on with deception. Now, I make no bones now about uh, saying what I need to say about those who I believe are part of this deception and lies. I'm in a position in the time of my life where I've basically been through everything, and what else have I got to lose? And so in this, then in itself, that as I stand and as I bring to you anything that I believe that will help you comprehend and make the, the right decisions that I'm going to be getting beat up quite a bit. Now, like I said, you know, if they can't hit me harder than my ex-wife could, then knock yourself out. Because I'll tell you what, when I get back up, I'm going to clean your clock. And I'm talking about those liars in the, in the third party and the alternative news because the information is out there and I'm going to bring it out. So as I finish tonight, ending in bringing info, to basically show you or represent deception, allowing you to make your own decisions on these matters, please remember to hit the reset button 
on everything that you've heard before, everything that you've learned or even thought, because you've been listening to so much, and it's, it's, it is difficult. There's a lot of lies that I believed at one time. When I came to the truth about how bad things were in 2009, even though I'd been in the deliverance ministry, when I saw the, the, the true conspiracies within our government, within the New World Order, within the churches, it was so hard. There was some times there I couldn't even get out of bed because I realized that my father in World War II was used. I realized that the Vietnam vets, how, how badly they were used in the Korean War, all the way back to World War I, and even those in the Civil War, that all the death and all the blood that was spilled was for nothing. It wasn't freedom. It was setting up the new world order. And also by the blood sacrifice at the time, giving, again, more power to them. So please remember, hit the reset button. The only way to receive truth is to be humble in spirit. Okay? So one of the ways was to say, hey, I don't have everything. I don't know everything. And though what I do know, what I will do is either compare it to the Word of God or the things that are brought to me, I will compare it to the Word of God. And by doing so, the Holy Spirit can work with you because it's certainly over the years through deliverance that many of the deliverances that were absolutely phenomenal, absolutely uh, success, had absolutely nothing to do with me. And when I say that, I'm saying that I was able to not operate in the flesh, but to operate in spirit. By understanding that no matter what I knew before, there was something new always around the corner that God wanted to reveal to me. Now, again, um, I'm not perfect. I still make my mistakes, and I still have to back up and reread and even hit the reset button once in a while. So I've, as I've mentioned in the past... I would be spending more time exposing the liars and the shields, the ones again, to deceive these seeking the truth. Because there's a whole nother implementation of lies and matrix of those coming into truth or seeking truth, keeping basically the matrix going even among truthers. So if you have, uh, let's say if you're debugging a program, you have to run the program. And when you run the program, you, you start to see the errors. And some of the errors do not reveal themselves until something else has been introduced and another string, another line, another part of the program comes in, and then that's where the bug shows up. And so part of the lies and the deception that's out there, that these so-called truthers in this, this alternative media that by bringing you this information, they see where your, where your uh, bugs are. They see where your errors are. They see what you know and what you don't know. They'll see what you believe and what you won't believe. And then they customize it through there. So I have several individuals on my list over the coming weeks to the end of this year. I hope to cover all of them. So let's look at some of the common issues I see with those who are basically real, who are truthers, who are the real deal. Now, so we have those who are true, we have those who are real, and we have those who are counterfeit. Now, God reveals to us that we shall know them by their fruit, but in time, that may take time. And we have one factor that they probably weren't considering, and that is the gang stalking. That is the implementation onto us, the ones who want truth, who have truth, who seek truth, who want to to be able to have freedom and truth, that through the gang stalking, through the targeted individuals, through, through, through chemtrails, through psychotronics, and all the other things that are out there, that those who are the truthers are getting beat up. Those who are presenting it do not seem to. And so in this contrast, I want you to separate yourself from what you knew before and take a second look, stand back, and see the big picture. First, they are targeted. They are stalked. They are sick. They are forever trying to keep their heads above water while whistleblowing. Those are the ones who are bringing truth. Now, 
you can have those who are in new age, and so on. That, that's a different category. They think they have truth. They're still targeted. They're still tormented. But chances are they're the ones who are, are tormented by the demons. So in this contrast to those I know are liars, who are deceivers, who operate with oppos- without opposition. See there, everything's rosy. The sun's up, the birds are singing, the, the flowers are blooming. You know, there's no skunk in their house. And unfortunately, they are moving forward at such an alarming rate, gathering up like, you know, something rolling downhill, a rock, a stone, a uh, pebble, and next thing you know, there's this this massive inertia heading towards the, the, the bottom of the canyon that leads nowhere. But unfortunately, many are joining. So those who operate without opposition, like most that I have uh, unfortunately experienced. Now, <clears throat> again, voice to skull, energy weapons, and gang stalking are not a part of their equation. They have not experienced it. They know nothing of it. They may talk about it, but they do not have firsthand experience because they are not targeted. Their bank accounts are not hacked. Their computers don't get hacked. Their phones don't get hacked. They don't have accidents, even leading to death, because many truthers, especially doctors who were trying to bring uh, the lie of, of the big pharma that many of them are dead, many of them are sick, many of them are terrified. So there are people out there that want to bring truth, but they're too scared to come forward. So it seems to be basically the masses of 95% in my calculation out there are liars. They are deceivers. And I am not joking. Now, does anyone know what a bot is? So let's say you get online and you post a blog. You have software that goes out through bots, comes in, looks at what you've written, and through software mimics artificial intelligence. Another blogger who comes in and counters, who comes in and tries to make you look like a liar. And you think it's a human. But that's how sophisticated they've come. There's this opposition that comes in and absolutely can devastate a truther And it's not even a human. So with this 90%, 95% that's out there, I will include the bots. Okay? Now with that said, who do we have out there? All right? Who gives us insider information? Talks to generals. Talks to CIA agents. Talks to spies. Talks to those who say they have what no one else has. They say they have truth. Is this so? How can they do this day in and day out with immunity, without any opposition, without being made sick, without having headaches or hearing voices or ringing in their ears? How is this possible? If they have truth and they are truly a opposition to the New World Order, to the Luciferians, to the Illuminati, how is it they operate in immunity? Potentially blowing the lid off having a smoking gun that would put a stop to all this illegal deep state assignments. So let's start with the Hagmans. Day in and day out, still here, still going strong, never hearing any issues other than a statement that they said that they were uh, hit by government agents a few years ago, which turned out to be a lie. And then even on air, threatened, along with quail, to have a death put on to the man down in Mexico, and then the woman now suing them, and I don't know how that's turning out. So what part of that do we not understand? And I bring this up because this is all a matter of public record. You can go back and listen to it. You can research it yourself. Then Quail, selling gold and telling us day in and day out with Masonic roots himself that he has truth. But yet, he's able to operate in immunity. Tom Horn, insider information of the Vatican. However, losing his co-author, Chris Putman, who the day before his death looked like he had seen a ghost. That man knew he was going to die. Now, 
We have L.A. Marzulli able to go anywhere that he wants to at any time to dig up varying secrets that would absolutely change the world, having no opposition, but yet at every moment on stage giving an Illuminati sign. These are just a few for now. I ask, if you have truth, if they have truth, then why are you not in opposition? Why why are you not being gangstock? Why are you not being pilfered? Why are you able to operate the way that you are? <clears throat> now, as I go through some of the stuff that I have uh, brought in over the years and some of the emails pointing to more facts on the very people that I have just mentioned, that as I set the stage and bring this out, I again... I want you to hit the reset button because you do understand that your soul is at stake here. That is what they're after. That is what they want. And any lie is a lie. Anything that is half truth is a lie. Now, you can be in error and you can be in a mistaken. And then when you find it out, you repent and you correct the error to go the right way. But when one continues, as I mentioned before, that wickedness those that are evil, those who pretend to have your best interest in mind, that they are an enemy of God. And that in and itself should make you understand just how serious this is. Now let's look at the old evangelistic trick by those who I have just mentioned. That those basically have said, you shall not touch my anointed ones. Now on TBN in the old days, I heard that a lot, like the false prophet and teachers that we know so well. Benny Hinn, Kenneth Hagin, Marilyn Hickey, Kenneth Copeland, Pat Roberts, John Hagee, Joe Olstein, boy, there you go, T.D. Jakes, all the way to Billy Graham, and certainly not to forget Rick Warren. That in it, they would say, do not touch my anointed ones, putting you in fear of bringing the truth. But if you have truth and you're operating in the Holy Spirit, your job is to expose the lie. The point is, if you are taking everything at at face value, your deception counter is broken. And again, with that lack of deliverance, it's no wonder. And it's not your fault. You are victimized. You are being held to um, a deception that is worldwide. It's not your fault, as I mentioned. You're a victim of today's great deception. All I ask again is to hit the reset button and open your mind. Think outside the box, because your soul is at stake. All right. Again, I want to thank you for your support. Thank you for being with me in all these years. As I change things around and move forth, I'm somebody that has just been through so so much. I've seen it all. I've seen what you've been through. I've prayed with you. I've taken your phone calls. I've taken your emails. I've done what I could. But now I need to expand. I need to, to hit the numbers higher. Because it's the remnant few that if we're going to save anything, if we're going to bring things back, at least prolong it, that's the only way that it's going to happen. And it's your support that has allowed me to do this. So let's, as we move forward, face this together. Now, some of you don't agree with me. I I get it. But you need, again, to think about what I just said. And it's the last time I will bring this up in the order that I did. Because as I... I'm going to be hitting other subjects. I'm not going to just be talking about this. But as I bring it up, I'll be presenting those facts. So you need to understand that those who have any Masonic background, those who even have direct relatives that are in the Freemasons, you need to understand that those in the occult, those that have been under the Luciferian doctrines, that as an adult or a parent have dedicated their children to Lucifer. And so we need to look at the people's parents and the generations after them to the direction that they have taken. All right, I hope that makes sense. God bless you, and we shall see you on Wednesday. And do not forget that on Tuesdays, I still am doing We Proclaim. All right, God bless.